we'd hate to live in a world where everything could be explained and nothing contained any mystery. Mysteries appeal to the imaginations of us all. Without mysteries, we'd be bored. We all love to have problems to solve, but the problem-solving process can be a frustrating one if the answer never comes. That feeling of frustration is what scientists encountered when they examined these archaeological discoveries. The ancient city of Uruk in southern Iraq has been a focal point for archaeologists for the past several years, and discoveries like this one are the reason why. It's a 4,000-year-old bitumen boat, and it was found in Uruk by an international team of archaeologists in 2018. Based on the condition of the ancient vessel, it seems that the experts got to it just in time. It was at severe risk of erosion and damage from traffic passing over the main road, just yards from where it was discovered. The body of the boat is made from a mixture of palm leaves, reeds, and wood, all of which are strengthened and held together by a covering layer of bitumen. It's 20 feet long and 4 feet wide. Based on the design, it's likely that the boat was a trading vessel, as it doesn't appear to be adequately equipped for fishing. Back when the boat was built, this part of Iraq was the capital of Sumeria, it was the world's largest city and had a population of roughly 80,000 people. Wooden relics of this age are found only rarely because the wood has a tendency to rot, but this one has survived because it was entombed within a dried-up canal. In late 2019, a remarkable discovery was made in Tremesson, France. The area is thought to have once hosted a large country estate belonging to the elite of Gaelic society between 2,400 and 2,100 years ago. Almost nothing of the estate is still visible today, save for a well. At the bottom of the well, archaeologists discovered four Iron Age busts along with a wooden tripod banquet bucket. All of the items were deposited in the well deliberately, which suggests that they might have been a votive offering. That might explain why the items have fire damage, as fire may have played a role in whatever ceremony went along with their burial. Thankfully, the fire didn't do too much damage, so we can still see the fine details on the busts. They've been carved in a realistic style, which might indicate that they're representations of real people. One of the busts is of a man with cropped hair and a neat beard, who seems to be wearing a torque around his neck, which might mark him out as a leader. All of the items are now on display at the Musée de Bretagne in Brittany. We got a rare look at the tools used by ancient surgeons when a funerary bundle was found in the Huaca Las Ventanas site in Peru in March 2022. The burial appears to be that of a sickened surgeon who was laid to rest surrounded by all of his tools and instruments approximately 1,000 years ago. This is the first discovery of a surgeon's tomb from this era in northern Peru. Unsurprisingly, many of the tools would be considered primitive by modern standards. The surgical kit includes needles, awls, and 50 different bronze alloy knives with single cutting edges. The knives have high arsenic content, the purpose of which is unknown. Also within the kit is a piece of bark from a tree that scientists haven't yet been able to identify but it's possible the bark was used as anti-inflammatory medication, or perhaps an analgesic, and may have been used in the same way that we still make aspirin tea from white willow bark today. We'll never know the surgeon's name, but the fact that he was also buried with a gold mask and a large bronze pectoral is a sign that he lived comfortably and was held in high regard. Mexico is always a fantastic place to look for archaeological artifacts, and our next set of discoveries is no exception to that rule. In the Mexican state of Jalisco, you'll find the El Toro Hills, and among those hills are countless ancient burial sites. Archaeologists have been exploring those burial sites for more than 80 years, and some of the things they've found there are nothing short of remarkable. The origin of the majority of the artifacts is considered unexplained. They're mostly made from ornamental stones like jasper, jade, and lapis lazuli, and take the form of plates, slabs, smoking pipes, masks, and alien-like figurines. 
In fact, alien and spaceship-like images and motifs appear on almost all of the El Toro artifacts. In many cases, the images are accompanied by symbols and what appears to be writing, but neither the symbols nor the writing can be translated. Scientists prefer to dismiss the El Toro artifacts as hoaxes, and that's probably true of some of them, but not all of them. There's clearly something very strange about the burials that took place in these hills many centuries ago, and we have no idea what the objects represent. Our next discovery isn't as much a true discovery as it is a re-evaluation of something archaeologists and historians have known about for a long time. Just off the western coast of Sicily is the island of Motia, and on Motia is an ancient monumental basin. Ever since its discovery many years ago, experts thought the basin was a Phoenician harbor. That opinion has recently changed. It's now thought to have been a sacred freshwater pool. The island has a long history of human settlement dating back to the Bronze Age, with the Phoenicians arriving there roughly 2,800 years ago. It quickly became an important port for early Mediterranean trade networks, but was attacked and destroyed by the Carthaginians 2,600 years ago. It was they who then rebuilt Modia from the ground up, including an enormous defensive wall, two enormous religious complexes, and the sacred pool. The cue that the pool had religious significance is the recent discovery of a temple of Baal very close to the basin. The temple remained in use for more than two centuries before being destroyed for unknown reasons about 230 years ago. Are the Sinai lead plates a record of the history of the Dacian people? Or are they high quality fakes? That's a question that experts have been debating since the 19th century, and they're no closer to an agreement on the issue now than they were then. The inscriptions on the plates are written in an unknown language, and as such have never been translated. The lettering is Greek, but the words make no sense in any form of Greek. Nobody knows when or where the plates were discovered, but the first written reference to them is from an inventory of a warehouse inside Bucharest's Museum of Antiquities in Romania just over 200 years ago. The inventory states there were 200 plates at the time, but only 35 are known to exist today. Aside from their inscriptions, many of the artifacts also feature illustrations of castles, temples, kings, and soldiers. While it's possible that the plates are genuine artifacts, the opinion of most experts in Romania is that they're forgeries created by Bogdan Petrico Hasdu, a Romanian philosopher of the 19th century who sometimes made forgeries of archaeological artifacts for his own amusement. In the southwestern Chinese province of Guishao is a mountain called Mount Gandang, and at the foot of the mountain is a cliff that's known to the locals as Chandaya. The name translates into English as the cliff that lays eggs. Elements of Chinese names can sometimes be lost in translation, but there's no translation error here. The name is meant literally because this cliffside somehow manages to produce egg-shaped stones at a rate of about one every 30 years. The eggs emerge from the side of the cliff and then fall to the ground below, where they're eventually found, picked up, and taken home by people from the local area. The stone eggs range in size from 7 inches to 2 feet in length, but all have the same dark blue color, and all are equally smooth. Scientists have been researching this strange phenomenon for decades, and although they've been able to confirm that the story isn't a myth, they have no idea how or why it happens. Their best theory is that these are metamorphic rocks made of silicon dioxide, which are slowly being pushed through the softer rocks around them. It's a good theory, but it's yet to be conclusively proven. Why is it that so many cultures from around the world, including some that still exist today, believed in the existence of all-powerful lizard people? The oldest known representations of these humanoid lizards come from Tel al-Ubaid in Iraq, where archaeologists unearthed a collection of 7,000-year-old lizard sculptures at the start of the 20th century. Our struggle to understand their meaning is tied up with our lack of knowledge about the Ubaidian culture. 
We know that they emerged in Mesopotamia around 8,000 years ago. But, as with the Sumerians, we have no idea where they came from. However, we do know that they created large villages of mud-brick houses and displayed agricultural and architectural skills that were way beyond the standards of their time. The lizard figurines they created all appear to wear helmets and are either extremely muscular or have padded shoulders. They often carry scepters, perhaps denoting royal status. Serpents were often used to represent gods in many ancient cultures. But what was the origin of this belief? It's no surprise that so many people think that the Earth was visited by lizard-headed aliens in the distant past. Everything you think you know about physics tells you that the Kumakivi balancing rock in Rukulati, Finland shouldn't exist. The stone on the bottom is significantly larger than the rock on the top, and the entire weight of the larger rock is perched on a perilously thin point of contact with the one below it. The whole thing ought to fall over, and yet it doesn't. The rocks have been in this position since ancient times, and according to local legends, they were left in their current position by a bored race of giants who used to play with rocks and boulders to pass the time. Scientists think that they have a better, if more mundane, explanation. They say that this part of Finland was once covered in vast glaciers, and it was glaciers that deposited the rocks here. Over time, the glaciers receded, weathering the rocks as they went. That left these two rocks arranged in this unlikely shape around 8,000 years ago. While that might explain where the rocks came from, it doesn't explain why the upper rock doesn't just topple over. Next, we're heading to Royston Cave in Hertfordshire, England. According to local legends, this was once a top-secret hangout for the Knights Templar. There's no way of proving that the secretive organization was ever here, but it clearly had some religious significance to somebody. The cave was found in 1742 by construction workers digging out fence posts. It's been investigated several times since then by archaeologists, all of whom agree that it was first dug out during the 13th century. What they're less sure of is who made the enigmatic paintings on the walls. There are symbols known to be associated with the Knights Templar here, but there are also a few symbols associated with paganism. There's no way the Knights Templar would have tolerated the presence of such symbols in their secret hideaway, because they were religious Puritans. Perhaps it's more likely that the cave has been used by two different religious groups at two different points in history. Frustratingly for historians, it's unlikely that we'll ever know for sure. Someone went to a great deal of trouble to seal it up once they were done with it, though. Speaking of symbols etched onto stone long ago, let's check out the Ica Stones of Peru, so named because they are only ever found in the country's Ica province. Each Ica Stone is made from smooth, polished andesite, and many of them are covered in engravings of animals. They were first brought to the world's attention by the Peruvian scientist Javier Cabrera during the 1960s, by which time he'd already collected over 10,000 examples. Cabrera's obsession with the stones stemmed from the fact that some of the engravings appear to represent dinosaurs. There are even a few that look like humans in spacesuits. Dinosaurs and humans never lived side by side, so the ancient Peruvians who carved the stones shouldn't have had any idea what a dinosaur looked like. Some of Cabrera's peers suspected the scientist had been duped, and when a farmer later admitted faking some of the stones and selling them to Cabrera, the mystery appeared to have been solved. However, the same farmer later confirmed that he didn't forge all 10,000 of them, so the origin of the remaining stones remains unexplained. There's a tourist attraction in the Hungarian capital of Budapest called the Panopticum. Prior to 2011, it was known as the Labyrinth of Buda Castle, these ancient caves hidden inside Castle Hill have a dark history, not least because they once contained a prisoner called Vlad Tepes. History knows him better as Vlad the Impaler, the bloodthirsty tyrant who inspired Bram Stoker to write Dracula. Vlad was trapped inside the labyrinth for 14 years from 1463 to 1477, 
and you're free to walk in his footsteps by entering the labyrinth for a small fee. Be warned, though, that there's no map and no available guidebooks. The existence of the caves goes back to the dawn of humanity. They were carved by rushing water and used for shelter and hunting as long ago as half a million years. 350,000-year-old tools made by Homo erectus have been found inside them in the past. In the darkest parts of the cave, tourists are advised to hold on to a long green pipe that guides them safely from one end to another. Let go of that and wander off into the dark and you might find yourself as trapped in there as Vlad the Impaler was all those years ago. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!